In March 2013, the full ban on animal testing for cosmetic products within the European Union entered into force. With this, a European research initiative began with the goal of developing alternative methods to animal testing. Finding alternatives to animal testing is a serious challenge. CERT-1 is an opportunity to move that agenda forward, developing good science in collaboration with the European Commission. It's key for us that we have a collaborative approach. We can't do this on our own. So collaboration, multidisciplinary approach is the essential model, and Surat is a superb example of that. Scientists from 70 European institutions joined forces to develop new methods of detecting safe chemicals in consumer products to replace animal testing. Traditionally, um, toxicological effects were measured in animal studies, and in one particular animal study you can cover many, many different possible effects. The question now is, can, can we really displace that traditional way of doing uh, toxicological testing with a, with a better way? Safety checks for chemicals are still based on animal testing. Yet, new methods developed within the life sciences provide the foundation for a fundamental change. Toxicity testing is bringing together two different worlds, the world of chemistry and the world of biology. The old testing strategy was, take a new chemical, expose animals to the chemical, examine the animal, and describe the toxicological effects in the organs. The new testing approach will be different. It will be based on a deep understanding of how chemicals cause dysfunctions in cells, what damage looks like within cells, within cellular compartments, and finally, at the level of proteins and molecules. The primary motivation um, from Surat One's research strategy, the way it's been designed, was to show that it is possible to use a mode of action based reasoning to intelligently, systematically, uh, rationally combine new technologies in a way that the information derived can be integrated um, to really answer a safety assessment question. The journey begins with system biologists that investigate traffic lines but within cells. Pathways and maps are the new basis to assess the toxicity of chemicals. Just like a criminal investigator searches for traces, the scientists try to unravel what traces a chemical leaves in the cell. They use human cell lines, treat them with chemicals, and prepare them for deep analysis. Modern instruments are used to see how cells react when chemicals attack them. The scientists screen the cells to identify reaction patterns. These screening methods produce vast amounts of data. Systems biologists dig deep into the molecular functioning of cells. They want to understand how they react to chemicals at the level of genes and proteins. They do genomic and proteomic, in short, omics analyses. So the, the omics analysis is allowing human biology-based uh, interpretation of toxic effects. So that's the biggest change because now the paradigm is moving from animals to humans. So looking at molecular mechanisms uh, in humans and omics is one of the tools that allows that. So we look into molecular mechanisms and <clears throat> the, more, the more we understand these cause and effect relationships in these complex networks, the more we will be able to pick out interesting key parameters that we measure. Once the puzzle of cause and effect is solved, 
The scientists have developed a pathway model and can pinpoint critical changes in the pattern of biological functioning. Sometimes you have to just pick out the most important uh, effects that you are seeing and then you have to take, go back to your drawing board and try to map uh, that on, on the pathways uh, to see which are the players or key events uh, that are involved in that pathway. So we have, we have networks and understanding networks is uh, very difficult unless we have a kind of a map. That's the basis that helps us understanding these complex uh, interrelationships. And these maps are applicable to all kinds of cells, bacterial cells, uh, mammalian cells, insect cells, fish cells, whatever. And, and, and this is the strength that we have something that unifies uh, the uh, biology so that we can transfer it. A unifying principle of biology. Toxicologists use this as an anchor to develop new methods. They transfer it to the concept of stress pathways. Most of the toxicologists will agree with me that oxidative stress is a very important component in toxicity. It's a highly conserved stress pathway that you will find in, in any cell, not only liver cells, in any cell, uh, in any organism to adapt to a stressful environment. Humans react to stress, and so do cells. Humans under heat stress start sweating to cool the body. Cells form certain proteins. This can be used to generate reporter cell lines. When a chemical meets a protein, the protein is activated. It then moves to the nucleus to initiate the defense mechanism. The protein finds distinct sequences in the DNA and splits it up. The new RNA strand will then be translated to a new protein that counterattacks the stress factor. The scientists now isolate the genes and add sequences to them to create reporter DNAs. They introduce this manipulated DNA into the cell line and it will be randomly integrated into the existing DNA. Once the stress reaction is initiated, the activated proteins will find the newly integrated DNA. Upon connecting with the new sequence, the new protein will start to glow. In the laboratory in Leiden, scientists develop these reporter cell lines with DNA from bacteria. They isolate and manipulate distinct DNA sequences to modify the protein that is being formed. The advantage of these reporters is that we can define in that setting what is the ceiling and based on that ceiling define, okay, it's better not to reach the ceiling because you know, then you might kill yourself, you, you might divorce, you may do something bad. You want to stay away from the ceiling. The reporter DNA needs to be integrated into the DNA of the target cells. To do this, the scientists use human cell lines in their work. Once the reporter DNA is in the cells, they can be used for toxicity testing. The chemical treatment is conducted automatically. Several concentrations of a chemical can be used at the same time. So one of the advantages of our, uh, um, of our reporter systems is that we can pinpoint a stress pathway at an individual cell level in time. So we can look at the dynamics. So it's the real biology that we're looking at. And they are literally looking at it. Imaging platforms are used to investigate the reporter cell lines. If the stress pathway becomes activated, it starts to glow. They can now equip their cell lines with several reporters. A fascinating idea. Knowledge of intracellular communication is used to create test batteries for toxicity testing of chemicals.
Reporter cell lines are certainly an important step forward. The problem is the availability of cells. This is the point where stem cell researchers enter the realm of toxicity testing. They also create reporter cell lines, but integrate the reporter DNA into stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells offers you the possibility to access any cell phenotype that you want to access and work with an unlimited biological resource. You can actually engineer the cell as you wish to get reporters of what is happening in the first stages of toxicity. The team has selected the same stress pathway as the researchers from Leiden, but the scientists put the reporter DNA in a stem cell that they can develop into various cell types. They are now able to investigate variations of toxicological responses in different cells, for instance, between liver and skin cells. I guess that now that we have cells that we can differentiate from the same cell line with the same genetic background, we will be able to do this side-by-side -side, uh, studies. At the end, the stem cell researchers will have the same reporter in different organ cells which have been created from the same stem cell. These methods run automatically on robotic systems that treat the cells in a fully reproductive way. The last step is to check the quality of the cells under the microscope. But this is not all. Stem cells offer the unique opportunity to address another uncertainty in toxicity testing. Pluripotent stem cell will also allow us to uh, reach uh, different population, different ethnic backgrounds. How can we consider the diversity between humans? Our sensitivities to diseases are diverse and we react differently to exposure to chemicals. Stem cell research offers the opportunity to tackle this issue. However, looking at separated cells is not enough. Clinicians know that one needs to take into account the interactions between cells as well. Toxicity is usually not just uh, damage to one cell, it's actually an interplay between different cells. And so the bioreactors that we were, uh, con have conceptualized and have partially created is actually a bioreactor where these cell types could live next to one another and then you could give toxins and have the cells interact with one another and recreate the damage in the chip. In our lab, we're actually focused on liver fibrosis. So fibrosis of the liver is like um, a scar when you get an injury on your arm. So you cut your arm, it starts bleeding, cells die off, and then you get scar tissue formation, like this crust that forms on your skin. And after a while, this dies off. So this also happens in your liver. Cell-cell interactions are fundamental to study the development of liver fibrosis under laboratory conditions. As a first step, the cell biologists select and isolate different cell types from liver samples which they get from the hospital. For studying liver fibrosis, the scientists created microorgans of the required cell types. However, when cells become isolated from their usual environment, they can easily lose their functions. The same set of cells may behave completely differently in a petri dish than in a living organism. A huge problem in cell cultivation. When checking the microorgans under the microscope, the cell biologists realized that they do not behave as had been hoped. 
the communication between the cells was disturbed. But finally, they found a solution. They created microorgans with intact communication channels indicated by the change of their shape. First time it was like a thrill, but still hard to believe. And once it starts working over and over again, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> so when we realized that we had, we, we felt that we have a lot of power in our hands to have a real alternative method to, to check uh, the pro-fibrotic uh, properties of a compound and to, to be able to do it in vitro with human samples. The Surat-1 scientists moved a step further. In a collaborative approach, material scientists, cell biologists and medical scientists created a liver on a chip for toxicity testing. This test system is now fit for purpose, allowing the monitoring of the response of an artificial liver to chemical treatment. Trying to make a flow through bioreactor is what we were trying to recreate the flow of the blood through the liver with the idea that this would then allow us to better grow liver tissue, but also have a more reliable and a more um, correct uh, um, model of the liver on a chip. With such a test system, the scientists can now close the gap between the organ and cellular levels. They take samples and send them to their colleagues to figure out which pathways are affected in their systems. The samples are prepared and measured by using the omics technologies. The metabolome actually sums up all the upstream reactions that happen. Uh, so genes will be transcribed, proteins will be formed, and they will then change one metabolite into another. So it gives you a snapshot of the actual phenotype in the system. The final aspect of the new animal-free toxicity testing strategy is the development of computer models to predict the toxicity of chemicals. Mathematical model is a, is a wonderful way of capturing conceptual understanding of a system. So during Sura, we saw really the emergence of what we call biological-based models, a virtual cell model, actually a model of, of an in vitro cell uh, experiment. Understanding the biological reactions and therefore being able to predict what is going to happen in the Petri dish is only one aspect. It is just as important to transfer the results to the whole organism. One needs valid results outside the laboratories. Uh, we were able to really tackle that issue. And, um, you know, um, being able to um, model and predict and measure um, the concentration of a chemical, the faith of a chemical uh, in vitro, and then or extrapolate from one situation to the other is hugely beneficial. It makes experimental design in vitro, for example, far more relevant. Uh, you're using concentrations and so on. Um, that makes sense. The computer scientists also developed profilers to predict potential biological targets of chemicals. These computer models work like a dating agency. They search for a biological partner that matches the structure of a chemical. We've really seen also now the emergence of um, really mechanistic-based computational modelling, so docking, really being able to predict how molecules interact because of um, deep knowledge of, of structure and chemistry and so on. In brief, the new animal-free concept for toxicity testing relies on a description of the whole process of intoxication. It begins with the initial reaction in the cells and leads to organ failure. The concept of describing how toxicity progresses from the cellular level to the whole organism and eventually the population is termed adverse outcome pathway, in short, AOP. Because an adverse outcome pathway um, spans uh, the domain from the molecular level right up to the organism level, it's, it's turning out to be a tremendous bridge to bring communities together. 
So now we have a situation where, uh, by beginning to elucidate or describe a toxicological process, everybody has a contribution to make. And for me, that's probably one of the exciting, most exciting aspects of AOPs, is really bringing different communities together, clinicians with, with computational chemists, with in vitro toxicologists, and even ecotoxicologists with human uh, health, because a lot of these mechanisms that we're concerned about um, are common to many species. In a nutshell, in the future, animal testing will be replaced by a combination of different methods. Omics data help to elucidate pathways as a basis for the generation of reporter cell lines that can be advanced by stem cell technologies. The organ on a chip device bridges the cellular level with the organ level. Finally, computer models help to extrapolate the results to the whole organism and predict the toxicity of chemicals. The next step is the validation of the developed methods. The European Union Reference Laboratory for Alternatives to Animal Testing, in short ECVAM, was established for this purpose. We will closely team up with ECVAM uh, and see how we can collaborate uh, using results developed in this project, including these reporter systems, and, and define optimal validation strategies. We really oversee that process and what we've, um, you know, believe over the years of us, of us validating methods is that the earliest that we can get in contact with the method developers, the better. The preparation of reference chemicals to be used in the toxicity study is always the first step of validation. ECVAM has its own laboratories to investigate toxicological responses of chemicals. The scientists use a fully automated platform for toxicity testing. Once the chemicals are introduced, the robota prepares dilution series as required for the study. A variety of different cell types can be introduced into the platform and can be treated with these chemicals. Finally, the effects can be measured using an imaging platform. With this equipment, the researchers at ECVAM can independently proof test systems developed to replace animal testing. The ultimate goal is then to support the progress of animal-free test guidelines. In Surat, we've really seen some uh, terrific uh, systems that are, are strong candidates to be brought forward and could well be a candidate for, for formal validation and possibly the basis of an international test guideline. By delivering a toolbox for animal-free toxicity testing, Surat 1 reaches its conclusion and sets the scene for future research. Surat 1, I think it's fair to say, has been a significant step forward in pushing forward the scientific agenda and the scientific outcomes have been very positive. There's still a long way to go, of course, but our vision is that alternatives to animal testing will become the norm, both in Europe and across the globe, when we develop our innovative products. Surat 1 has brought that vision closer to reality. This is a milestone in the long-term journey towards a future of animal-free toxicity testing of chemicals.